What's going on you guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm really excited because I got something that's been cooking for a long time. I know some of you guys that are in a, a specific Dodge group have, have been asking me for this for a long time and I finally have it complete. You actually probably just saw it in the back and that is the homemade DIY uh, E-Fan conversion kit. So what I'll be doing with this one is I'll be getting, I'll be installing this one and I'll be removing this elephant of a fan, so radiator fan. So I'll be getting rid of this thing because one, I mean, look at how big this thing is, it's an eyesore. Two is because if you look down there, right, that's a clutch fan. That thing um, steals power parasitically, right? Because it's attached to the motor. The motor, when, it's, when it turns on, it has to make those really heavy fan blades turn. Um, which in turn obviously is gonna you know um, take some power and it's not gonna be like a huge dramatic difference to where you're gonna when you step on it you're gonna see a notice a big difference um, but it is parasitic it might make the, the, the truck a little bit more efficient a little bit more um, you know less stress in the motor and what this does is this doesn't actually give you horsepower this frees up horsepower so um, according to some of the dyno things that I've looked at um, online, it frees up roughly about 10-ish, 15 horsepower, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I, I'd say it's somewhere around the 10 horsepower number. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. It's a super easy process, guys. I'm going to show you guys how I do it step by step. There's only four bolts to remove that fan shroud. The hardest part of this, if you haven't removed this before, is actually to remove that clutch fan because when there's a big nut that's in there and in order to remove that you have to hold on to the fan which is the hardest part a lot of people use different there's like a hundred different methods to get it out i have a kind of homemade bar actually you can see it over there to uh stick into some holes that it has right there in that um in that crank and pretty much hold it actually you know what you guys will see it in a little bit all right, so like I was saying, there's like a hundred different ways to remove these fans. The way that I'm going to do it is got this little, you know, made it another made it home DIY project, just like the one over there. Um, so I can stick these two uh, little pins into the holes on the um, on that pulley. And, and then I have a little gentle persuader right here so I can tap on this on this with this. I don't know the actual nut size, so if you guys want the the size, you guys can just, you know, look up the uh, the information on the Dodge website or whatever and pull it up. But I'm just using a crescent wrench, large crescent wrench. This has worked out for me. And that block over there, that 4x4, is so I can hold this up against that and it doesn't damage my fenders or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys how I do it. As you can see, that is locked in right there. So now what I do is I just push this down like that that should be should be okay right there and now i just stick this in here to hopefully break that nut and it's loose that's all it took right there. Now that it's been cracked loose, you can actually show you guys. So just by spinning that, you can see that nut in there is starting to unthread. See that? So I'm gonna stop right there so I don't get it out all the way because I don't want it to fall on my radiator quick little tip when you guys are taking this off when you're removing this uh, window wash um, uh, reservoir make sure that you pull up these little tabs right here and then if you can see those two circles down there those are you actually don't have to push them in but if you can it would kind of help you to give it a little boost uh, so you can uh, kind of pop it off but more than anything these are the ones that are locking it in that are keeping it in place. And now it gives us access to those four bolts that I was talking about. I believe that these are 10 mil and just has two on each side and that's it. 
and it's got one bolt here and then it's got the other one right down i can't see it because of the damn yeah there it is that's the one so see oh yeah that's right you take this out you take those four bolts out and here i actually haven't done it yet but what i'll be doing here is this is where i'll be putting my temperature probe to obviously get the temperature readings and i will be i might might not do it today but i might be attaching one to my ac because the reason why it's a good idea to put onto your ac you don't have to is in case say for example that you're running down the road right it's 105 degrees out and you're you're coming off the highway and you come into the city and you come to a stop what happens is that because you come into a stop right now you're not going to have the air coming in from the ac that's as cold the reason for that is because your radiator isn't cooling as much anymore so what happens is that if you turn on your ac right and you have it connected it's going to automatically turn those fans on which is in turn going to cool the air which is going to give you colder ac air so i might do that i'm not entirely sure i'm not really too picky about ac i rarely even use ac when it's hot out so i don't know we'll see but anyway let's go ahead and get started let's start taking that stuff off so you guys can see what it looks like when it's on okay we got the fan out now we just gotta get this big breath out of here There it is. Here's this old fan shroud, right? The size of a house. And you compare that to this thing right here. Tiny, small, efficient, you know, won't rob you of power like that thing does over there. It's crazy. It's like three times the size. I mean, yeah, it's heavier. This one's heavier, but gonna be on the body of the truck anyway so it wouldn't be a lot more efficient so let's pop this one in and we'll see wire it up and it should be good to go so just in, just in case you guys are wondering I went with a as far as the relay goes this is the what is it Craig Davis forget the exact model number it has a digital display this one's not waterproof but I, that's why I put it up here because it's high it's right where the hood's gonna be at so it has dual dual fuses the each one is 30 amps and it's pretty i mean it's pretty simple installation there's not much to this it's not rocket science you know it's it's got a negative it's got a positive depending on how you install these is how they're gonna blow right if i have them facing the other direction or just to say for example the way that i have them right now if i wanted to pull this blue one right here has to be grounded and the black has to be connected to power. And I know because I did a mock-up and I checked it out, make, made sure everything was good. And obviously this is power. This right here is my, uh, my ground, earth right there. And this right here, ignition, this is gonna go to a some sort of power switch source. Uh, I'm gonna fuse mine or connect it to a fuse in my fuse box inside of the cab. And so the, the fans only turn on when I turn the truck on or the, the, the key is turned and then this over here is my temperature temperature probe which i'm going to be connecting with my davis craig sensor adapter that's going to go on the hose let's pop this bad boy in now look at this you got so much room in here in right on this side looking good so far now I just gotta wire that up run those run run those right in through those looms and then I made a little hole on this side so they can all come out this way and it's gonna go right up in that battery and it should be good to go now I actually just have to I'm gonna take some water out of this so I can put my adapter because this is again this is where my uh, my sending unit is going to be in case you guys are wondering what type of adapter I'm using what size it is a 36 to I believe it's 44 40 or 44 I did something to my nail anyway uh, 36 to 40 
or 44 uh, millimeters. It's, I believe it's a 1.5 inner diameter. If you can see right there, it has like a double sleeve and that's because it does have a sleeve. This, I had to put this one on in order for this to fit. It's gonna be a really snug, tight fit, but that's good because that's exactly how you want it to be. You don't want this thing to be loose or anything like that. So if you guys do buy this, just make sure that you guys put this on. Um, you don't put it, put it on without it because this can just pop off with all the heat because this thing expands and you don't want to have a mess of radiator fluid flying all over the inside of your engine bay. So I'm going to put this right about here, right on that bend. And I'm going to cut off about three quarters of an inch, which is that diameter right there. Now that we have that adapter on, the way that this works, oh, I don't want to drop that. Has, I don't know if you guys saw that little hole in there. Little steel, uh, looks like a bearing. Uh, so the way that this works is when you put this on and then you pass this probe is when you hold on to this one down here, you pass it through like that, right? It has a little lock, kind of locks in right there. But when you hold it out, and then you lock it in and you tighten these two that actually compresses the part in there which is gonna which is gonna keep it in place and you know you're not gonna have to worry about this popping out or anything like that so very simple installation you guys saw how easy it is to put this on i did have to put a tiny bit of oil right on the um on the rubber uh sleeve just because it was so tight to get in there but now that i got that in there don't have to worry about it and I'm just gonna wire up the rest of it and we'll be good to go. Put this reservoir back on. Like I said, it just slips in there and everything should be good to go. I got this reservoir on, everything should be ready. Let's fire her up and see if it works. So I'm gonna turn this key, turn that on. And right now it doesn't turn on simply because it has this um, descending unit connection, right? As soon as I unplug this, it's gonna ground and those fans should turn on. So hopefully, cross my fingers I did everything well, everything right. And let's find out if it actually turns on. There they are. <laughs> They're both kicking. Actually, one turned on first and then the other one turned on. I want you guys to see how much CFM this is pulling. The last one, I didn't get to show you guys, but the last one pulls about 1500 CFM for the one big fan. Let's find out how much this one is actually doing. So there you have it firsthand. They are about 900 CFM each. So total combined, you're getting about 1800 CFM, which is 300 CFM more than the clutch fan that it comes with from the factory. In my book, um, I mean, that's great because you're getting that much more cooling power. It's more efficient because now you don't have the drag that you normally get with the, with the engine because it's, you know, parasitic power being stolen from the engine. And um, overall, just a little bit more efficient maybe a little bit in gas savings um i can't tell you that yet if, if it is it's going to be very little it's not going to be too much but overall i'm happy i mean they cool better um and uh you know we're, we're just gonna see how good they work in the long run so thanks for watching the video you guys if you find this video helpful um let me know in the comments to do a complete diy on building these fans um the only reason i didn't do it this time is because it was my first time doing it and I did a lot of mistakes and I just didn't want to, it would have been a lot of work to actually record all that stuff and 
having to delete that much footage or anything so but if you guys want me to do another one like put together like step by step how everything is built let me know because i have a friend of mine that actually wants one of these now so I, and i can record how i do everything so um please let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do that and with that being said thanks for watching the video guys please like and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys later